The desperate scramble to get out of Afghanistan as the Taliban take over. The swift shift in power has left chaos and panic in its wake, with civilians frantically trying to board jets, fearful of what comes next. But a Taliban commander tells us they shouldn't be afraid, despite the new world that awaits them. Especially for women for whom the change in command impacts every single aspect of their life. This street represents the changing face of Kabul, women's hairdressers, beauty salons and boutiques, all painted over and shut. Tonight, John will join us live from Kabul and we'll look at where Afghanistan stands politically, both here and in America. The government says not all the Afghans who helped the British will make it out of the country. And we speak to veterans who served and the families who lost loved ones about the undoing of their work. Also on the programme, another change in COVID rules for those who are double jabbed. This is the ITV Evening News with Charlene White. Good evening. The scenes of panic, desperation and fear among those trying to escape Afghanistan were unpalatable as the 20-year war ended as it began with the Taliban in control. Scared by what happens next, crowds tried to board flights out, some by clinging to military aircraft as they took off. A senior Taliban commander told ITV News that Afghans who stood with the West have nothing to fear. It was, of course, the decision by US-led forces to withdraw which allowed them to sweep to power with an incredible speed that shocked even the Taliban themselves. And that means for many Afghans, the change in their way of life has been swift and harsh, especially for women who fear they'll now lose everything they've worked so hard for. You may find some of the images in our senior international correspondent John Irvine's report from Kabul distressing. In Kabul, it seems you can turn back time. The Taliban promise it'll be better this time, but so dark are the memories of 20 years ago, many here simply don't believe them. The fall of Kabul will forever be defined by these upsetting images. So much for an orderly, American-led departure. What looks like a disaster movie was all too real. It's fact, not fiction, that these Afghans were so frightened. They were willing to take their chances, clinging to a departing American transport plane rather than staying here. But as a bid for survival, it was doomed. Several men plunged to their deaths as the jets climbed and U.S. personnel left this fiasco behind them. When we flew into Kabul early yesterday, Afghanistan was still a democratic republic. Tonight, it's an Islamic emirate. This morning, the Taliban escorted us through the city they claim they had to rush in to save from looters when government forces fled. They captured Kabul with comparatively few fighters, but say 10,000 reinforcements will soon be here to completely dominate the capital. That's the British embassy. The Taliban have guards around it today. They they want to have a relationship with the international community, so they don't want the place looted or ransacked. Our journey ended at what was, until yesterday, the home of the United Nations assistance mission in Afghanistan. It's now a Taliban barracks. Did they come here yesterday? It was heavily defended, but the guards surrendered without a fight. So these are some of the new rulers of Kabul. Clearly the Taliban advance on the city was very well organized. These men knew exactly where to come. This is one of the UN compounds in the city and they're going to guard it until Kabul is entirely pacified. Inside we met the Taliban commander now in charge of this part of the city. He told me he'd been injured five times during his 17 years fighting the Americans. 
He also said he was surprised how easy it had been to take back the Afghan capital. I never thought I would see it in my lifetime. When I came into the city, I cried with joy. People welcomed us. They were very happy. When I pointed out that the disturbing airport scenes suggested many Afghans were terrified of the Taliban, he blamed 20 years of foreign propaganda and lies. We want to persuade those trying to leave to stay here instead. They are our brothers. When they stood with the foreign invaders, they were our enemies. But now that the infidels have betrayed them, all is forgiven. As we left, the Taliban commander showed us a new stash of weapons they'd set aside. These are obviously the uh, AK-47s and magazines that the Taliban confiscated from the Afghan soldiers and police officers who were guarding this UN compound only yesterday. The Biden administration can dress all this up whatever way it likes, but one consequence is that Afghan women can no longer dress the way they like. Face coverings are compulsory again. On a street well known for ladies' shops, pictures in the window of barefaced women have already been painted over. The spectre of female servitude looms once more. This street represents the changing face of Kabul, women's hairdressers, beauty salons and boutiques, all painted over and shut, probably never to reopen. As autumn approaches, the clocks will soon be going back, but here it will be by more than an hour. John, the speed with which this has happened just can't be underestimated. I mean, what's your take on what you've seen since you arrived there a few days ago? Charlene, it's both uh, shocking and sad. Driving around Kabul today, it was almost like the last 20 years never happened. No one's wearing Western clothes anymore. The old government's vanished. The Afghan army and police force are gone. On Saturday, the Taliban were insurgents. Tonight, they rule Afghanistan unopposed. They're trying to reassure people. Initially, girls are still attending school. They want people to go back to work. They're trying to uh, pleasantly surprise at home and abroad. They don't want to become international pariahs straight off the bat. Will it last? Clearly, those Afghans making suicidal attempts to try to fly out of here today don't think so. And why, why would they? The Taliban have a brutal history and believe in the strict implementation of Sharia law. As well as that, they've been at war with the Afghan security forces for years. And the fear must be that they will seek retribution against members of those security forces at some time. This is hardly a country renowned for the forgive and forget attitude that the Taliban appear to be adopting at the moment. John, thank you. Well, the Taliban's resurgence is being seen as a humiliating and deeply shameful moment for the US, the UK and their allies. More British troops are being sent to get UK nationals and Afghans who worked with our forces out of the country. But earlier, the Defence Secretary admitted some will be left behind. Here's our political correspondent, Carl Dinan. These are the lucky ones, if leaving your home can be called lucky. Afghans who'd worked for the British and their families who managed to get onto RAF flights out of Kabul. Nearly 300 have been flown out in the last week. Another 2,000 are standing by. The government quickly changing the rules to get more people out. People that have passed our vetting uh, but don't have an Afghan passport will still be allowed to come through the process. And the last Afghan government, the one that disappeared yesterday, was uh, insisting they had a passport. Uh, we'll, we, as long as we know who they are, we've done the checks. We'll, we'll, we'll suspend that as well and get people out. But there are still people who I'm afraid will not be able to get to Kabul and will just not be able to get out at this time. This time and the fall of Kabul has come about so much more quickly than anyone had expected. The situation in Afghanistan is shocking and it's tragic. We're seeing before our very eyes the unravelling of 20 years of progress um, and of huge sacrifice. G-Man, as you can see here, 
457 British personnel lost their lives in Afghanistan, fighting alongside and training the Afghan forces who, in the end, could not stand up to the Taliban. It's a bitter disappointment for those who served there. My personal opinion is that we, we did abandon them. Um, and you know, nothing that the military were, were going to do would change that. That's a political decision. For me personally, it's very disappointing. Um, it's very sad. Um, and, and, and with it comes a sense of shame. And there's a sense of fear for those with families still there. Former interpreter Jamal wants the government to get his father out. He has sent is a video where the Taliban captured Lashkagar. And you can hear the noise of the rounds and the fire, the heavy fight. They have sent him and said, look at this, this is my situation. I'm, I'm in imminent risk. What else do you want me to, what else do you want me to, to be happen to me? Afghans who can get out and British nationals will go into hotel quarantine on arrival here. The Afghans will then be found places with local authorities around the country to begin the new lives. They were not expecting to start so soon. Carl Dinn and ITV News, Westminster. Watching the chaos unfolding in Afghanistan is painful for those who sacrificed so much in the hopes some good would come from the conflict. The veterans still suffering the effects of war, both physical and mental, and the families devastated by loss. Hannah Miller has been hearing from some of those now asking what it was all for. Ben Parkinson's life is unrecognisable from what it might have been. He went into Afghanistan to serve his country and emerged as the most badly wounded British soldier to survive. Sitting alongside his mum, he said, we never should have gone in, but we have a duty to make it right. We shouldn't have gone in the first place. But now we have, we should make it right. I'm absolutely furious. All we can see is lives lost and lives ruined here and in Afghanistan to no end whatsoever. Was it worth it? Can't possibly have been worth it. A procession of lives were lost in the pursuit of transforming others. Acting Corporal Machin Wojtak, one of more than 400 servicemen and women who never made it home. I think it's very um, sad for all the parents that have lost loved ones over there, all the families, and it's just brought back horrendous memories that we thought would, that we buried. For many of those who survived, the distressing scenes from Afghanistan make their daily battles harder. Michelle Partington was a Royal Air Force paramedic discharged with post-traumatic stress disorder. You know, I, I turn on whatever programme it is and it's everywhere, everyone's talking about it. And I just have to just think about the coping mechanisms that I've put in place to try and bring my head back to the here and now. You know, I left a piece of myself in Afghan that I'll never get back. For thousands of servicemen and women who hope to change a country for good, their mental and physical scars now seem to be the only permanent legacy, leaving many tonight asking the question, what was it all for? Hannah Miller, ITV News. OK, let's get into the politics of this. Uh, from our global security editor, Rohit Katru, and our political correspondent, Carl Dinan. Carl, I'll start with you, because there was an admission today from the government that it may have to deal with the Taliban. Well, indirectly, they already are. The Defence Secretary told me that he had sought and received assurances from the Taliban via another Middle Eastern country that people who wanted to leave would be allowed to. And today, the Foreign Secretary, Dominic Raab, also warned the Taliban publicly that they must stick to their commitments on respecting human rights, especially those of women and girls, and on not becoming a safe haven once again for international terrorism. So this is very far from any kind of normal diplomatic relationship but it is a recognition of who holds the power in Kabul, whether the government here likes it or not. And, of course, they don't. Rohit, to you now, uh, because the Pentagon's scrabbling to send more troops to Afghanistan tonight. And that's recognition, Charlene, of the sheer chaos on the ground, particularly at the airport, which is the gateway to the outside world, compounded by the Americans uh, by reports tonight that a US soldier has received gunshot wounds in Kabul. For all the talk today at the UN of, uh, of Afghanistan's tomorrow, the focus for most countries is entirely on today and getting their citizens out. 
President Biden hasn't said anything publicly on this for six days. In fact, he flew off on holiday last week, suggesting he was either caught off guard or thought he could sit it out. He won't. Uh, tonight, he's back in Washington. He's going to address the nation about what may well be remembered as the biggest crisis, foreign policy crisis of his presidency. Carl and Rohit, thank you both very much. OK, still to come on the ITV Evening News. The minute silence for the five people shot dead in Plymouth. And the new quarantine rules for the double jabbed. Those stories are more after the break. Welcome back. A minute's silence was held this morning to remember the five people killed by gunman Jake Davison in Plymouth last week. In the wake of the mass shooting, the Home Office has asked police forces to review how gun licences are awarded. Sarah Alcaria reports from the city. <laughs> Five bells tolled across Plymouth for each of the five victims as the city fell silent to remember them. Young and old from all walks of life. Plymouth for us has, has been a city that's a safe place, wonderful place to raise a family. I think we were just so shocked by the events of last week. What a terrible thing to happen, you know, to lose so many people in a small community. Maxine Davison, Lee Martin and his three-year-old daughter Sophie, Stephen Washington and Kate Shepherd were all shot dead by Jake Davison. We are in shock, feel guilty and angry about the events surrounding the deaths of our beloved community members because we love. And it is that love and energy that we can now use to bring about change. In just 12 minutes, Jake Davison killed five people. His mother was his first victim. Before the attack, he wrote about mass shootings and made threats in his social media posts. In the wake of his attack, though, the government is tightening existing firearms controls. So anyone applying for a gun permit will now have their social media posts vetted. This retired senior police officer, though, worries how police forces will resource the extra work. I am genuinely concerned about how many other individuals have slipped through the net because of the lack of resources. We could be sitting on uh, individuals like Davidson all over the place. Tonight, though, Plymouth is reflecting and remembering those whose lives were tragically lost. Sajal Karia, ITV News, Plymouth. The Queen has sent a message of condolence to the Prime Minister of Haiti after Saturday's devastating earthquake. More than 1,200 people are known to have died and thousands injured. Rescuers are rushing to find survivors in the rubble ahead of potential heavy rains from an approaching tropical storm. The Queen said she was deeply saddened by the tragic loss of life. COVID rules were further relaxed in England and Northern Ireland today. People who've had two vaccine doses and those under 18 no longer have to isolate if someone they've been in close contact with tests positive. But they are still advised to get tested and take extra care. Here's our political reporter, Shihab Khan. Every new COVID announcement these days seems to be another step towards freedom as more of us continue to venture outdoors. Isolation rules have changed for the double jabbed and under 18s. But if you're a close contact of someone who gets COVID, you're advised to get tested. Today at this adventure park in London, I asked people if they welcome the move and if they'd follow the guidance. People that have had two jabs aren't going to get COVID, hopefully not. And it kind of opens up the world a little bit more. I'd do a test, yeah. Um, yeah, I would do. I'd still want to, you know, just I'd want to know and then I could just go out and just live a normal life. From today in England and Northern Ireland, people who are fully vaccinated and those under 18 will no longer have to self-isolate if a close contact test positive. But you are advised to get a PCR test as soon as possible to check if you have the virus. And you should consider other precautions, such as wearing a face covering in enclosed spaces and limiting contact with other people. 
It is welcome news for many businesses around the country, some of which had to close because so many members of staff were off self-isolating. But for some, like Hannah Deacon, the news is concerning. She has been shielding throughout the pandemic and thinks it should be compulsory to get tested if you've been in contact with someone who has COVID. You could literally be out on the street and the person next to you who is could basically have COVID and spreading the disease to yourself or to others. Surely we're going to actually reduce the spread, actually, if everyone has a test, have a test, you're clear, now you don't need to isolate. The government says it's the vaccine rollout which means they'll be able to take this step and they'll hope that it's another move towards life that's not restricted by the pandemic. Chihab Khan, ITV News. To end tonight's programme, we're going to return to events in Afghanistan where, at unexpected speed, the Taliban have taken back control of the country. Let's not forget what triggered that war against them almost 20 years ago, the September the 11th attack in America. Almost 3,000 lives were lost that day, the spark for what was called the War on Terror, but what came next saw almost 70,000 Afghan civilians lose their lives. In America's search for Osama bin Laden and al-Qaeda, the masterminds behind 9-11, forces invaded Afghanistan to get rid of the Taliban. And though the group were pushed back, it came at a heavy human cost. Not just of Afghan civilians, but also thousands of coalition troops. With so many of the freedoms of the Afghan people, especially women, now gone, and with them facing a terrifying new dawn, it begs the question, if it could all just be taken away in a blink of an eye, was it even worth it? Tom will have you on latest developments at News at 10. But good night.